kicking it in there, look. But it's just gonna get us, you know, in the blue. Yes, uh, sir. We're caught. We're, we're live. Live shit. Let's get it, man. What's yes, good? Sir. You're on the show, <laughs> Black Duck. What's good, baby? We know, where you, we know where you're from is in your name, but why don't you tell us how you chose that name? <laughs> or did the name choose you? That's a real question. We just coming straight out the gate. You already knew it. Look, I would say that the name chose me, bro. And that's really because of a lot of struggling I'm going to see, bro, like throughout this course. And I wanted something that really just like was going to give us some hope, bro. Like, I came into this shit, I was doing music by myself in a room or whatever, you know. Not even music, just writing poetry. So it's like going from that level, actually stepping into the music with it, bro, and finding a way to bring them two worlds together and make the best, you know what I'm saying? Like the best that I could be or the best music that I could put out, like on an inspiration level. And through that music, I start seeing a lot of hope. But it's like the hope that I saw was coming from a lot of despair, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, just real shit. Like, that's the only hope that I would get. And the name really came, like, to save me on some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to really be for my people and to do so much for them. But it's like, by me dealing with this shit and, like, being in this ship, nigga, this water, how this shit go, trying to do something, that's when everything start going against you. Like, you know? Before that, if I wasn't trying to do shit or just nobody, like anybody in your life, if they not trying to do something in their life, bro, it might be a smoother sale. But it's like, as soon as you actually trying to do something or you learn, you get older, bro, you grow a brain, you start writing some of your wrongs, though, like, you know, none of that shit. Like, that's when all of the turbulence is going to come. And it's like, none of that other shit don't really matter no more. It's like you setting that in your mind and you really trying to get to what you trying to get to, dog. To where a lot of the shit that you used to worry about or just the way life is, traditional shit, like all that shit gonna start seeming primitive. So it's like, that's why I try to reach younger people right now because I'm trying to show them that that time is now. Like, it's always been now. It ain't never gonna be later, bro. It's gonna always be now. You know what I'm saying? And... A lot of them haven't grown or haven't reached the maturity. Because I don't want to say age. Like, age does not determine maturity, bro. Or wisdom, you know what I'm saying? Those things come through life and experiences, bro. Like, they got 60, 70-year-old people that they never found the best of themselves. Like, while they was here, because they never challenged themselves. And you have younger, 13, 18, 19-year-old players in the league. Stuff like this. These little dudes, they challenging themselves, bro. And the world is challenging, but I'm saying they meeting that shit and they getting it done at an earlier age, though. But that's all because they challenged themselves and went within and fought that battle. So mm -hmm. a lot of artists and entertainers and people in general, we all have a hometown and we familiar with the concept of quote unquote weapon our hometown. Right. But you chose to put your hometown in your name. Yeah. So, with that being said, what do you think your hometown contributed or gave you as far as your style and the music that you make? Everything I see, bro. <clears throat> because it gave me the foundation to actually build everything that I done got to. Whether it done added shit to my foundation or it done stripped shit from my foundation. You dig? Like, adding it on is a blessing. That's the land, yeah, Paul, bro. But I'm saying, like, to be honest, I'm going to flip that shit, bro, and see that stripping did more for me than ad never did, bro. Because stripping just showed me how to add, cause, you know what I'm saying? Once something taken from me, that's showing me how to go back and what I need to do to get to what I'm trying to get to, bro. You know what I'm saying? What I'm pushing towards. I hate to see trying. Like, I'm saying, I know I done said it a couple of times, and that ain't even one of my words, because I really feel I do it. Might not be up to this person's speed, that person's speed. None of that shit don't matter to me, bro. Because everything that I get comes straight to me. Now, it's up to me if I want to go out and share with other people or this and that. But, man, we all live in our own lives, bro. And 
that's a big part of it. You know what I'm saying? You really got to tone down a lot of stuff that other people got going. That's on them, bro. This on you. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to take this shit seriously further, really max out something, bro, that's what you're going to have to do, bro. It ain't going to be done. Like, straight up, everything ain't for everybody. You know? Speaking of everything ain't for everybody, in, uh, in, in the last few years in, in hip-hop and rap particular, there's been a lot of emphasis on the independent artists and being independent. Mm -hmm. Independence and ownership and the like. Uh, with the thought that everything ain't for everybody in mind, what, what has... Being an independent artist, what has that experience been like for you? What are some of the biggest struggles you, you've seen, experiences you had as an independent artist? For myself, personally, promotion. <laughs> Just getting the word out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just my music, like everything that I'm doing. I put it like this, bro. And I don't like to see... Uh, like, I hear a lot, it's like cliches. You hear a lot of artists like, man, they just don't want me on. I'm spitting real shit, bro. They don't want my music to get out and this and that. And from me being once a listener instead of an actual artist, bro, like, I understand that shit. And it's just like, it's crazy, bro, because from that standpoint, you are not really inside of those doors where they got all this weird ass shit going on, bro. Like, for me, Instagram, I'm going to see just because I got to put it out there. I'm saying, I want people to know exactly what I'm dealing with, Brian, exactly what's going on with me. I cannot pay for promotion on this site. And they send me, they basically send me messages letting me know, like, why? And it's about my lyrics. It's like some of the stuff that I'm saying. I had a song, Black Problems. They're telling me that this song could incite a riot, or riots all over if this song was to get out. My song, Quarantine, Too Much Truth in it. I'm talking about the quarantine, not just even the process with the shots and all of this stuff. I'm speaking on what's actually going on and what the quarantine was really about. The quarantine was a fucking reset, bro, on the world. Like a real reset. The world stopped, bro. They actually had a lot of things that was going into place. These things already was already in motion, bro. And finally, they opened the floodgates up when they let everybody back out in population, bro. So everybody came back in population to a whole new fucking world, bro. And that's the type of shit that I was saying. Now people starting to see the shit that I'm saying. And I see the shit then, but it's like, it's an artist, you know, as an artist and not a big name, it's harder for me to reach those people and they going out their way to keep me from reaching them. Like, I understand what people saying now, bro. I just never been this deep in the game the way I can see for myself. And now I can see for myself. And I see the fucking game rigged, straight up. Like, it's rigged, bro. So you're saying that the paid advertisements that any Instagram user can use to boost a post or anything else, yep. you're not allowed to do that? No. I can, man, you can talk about <clears throat> killing, you can talk about any of that shit, that shit going through, straight through. You come through talking some real shit, bro, I'm talking about on a positive level, but not even always positive, bro. I'm talking about just fucking truthful. Like, truth is what these people don't want ever. You know what I'm saying? The fucking world is fake as it ever been, bro. Like, just on the real. Like, I never seen none of us, bro. Like, I'm saying, anybody that nigga my age close to it or whatever, bro, I'm saying, bro, we never seen no shit like this. And we saw this shit happen over a period of, like, three to five years, dog. The whole world shifted is what I'm saying. It's like it'll never be the same. You know what I'm saying? And there's a sure. few real niggas that still left standing. And everybody else just amongst the bullshit, bro, to be real. But it's like, it's even harder to find a real nigga right now. like Or just some real niggas to link with. Like, how you'll be like, man, we can start a, we can start a movement. We get, man, we don't have enough real niggas to be around on the same page, bro, to even do that. Everybody caught up into material shit, dumb shit, whatever the fuck it is that got them... Whatever they, they, they into, bro. But a lot of this shit come from social media and all of this shit. Like, all this was put in place for us already, man. They sat people down for however long that shit was, bro. Throughout that pandemic, nobody couldn't go no fucking where. Nobody could, man. People started living through the fucking phones and through the computer, bro. That's 
one site, but there's several other sites. Is there any other place where you experience? Or can you advertise on Facebook? Facebook and Instagram are pretty much the same. Like as far as the promotion, promotion goes through Facebook to Instagram. So it's pretty much the same, like, and they've been doing the same thing on both sites. The only thing, the only leverage I have is from people sharing my shit or me actually putting it out there myself. Like, without that, it's no boost. I can't go in and pay for none of that. They don't take my money. It is what it is. Like, you know, I'm not tripping. I'm finding ways around the game, but I just want people to know what the game is. I'm not complaining at all. I'm a game player. It is what it is. But I want people to know. When they see other people saying some of this shit, them people not tripping, dog. Them people telling you the fucking truth. And you don't want to hear it from them. Y'all rather hear from whoever got the name, and that's cool. But what I'm saying is, that motherfucker getting paid to tell you a lie. This nigga is not getting paid to tell you the fucking truth. You dig? This nigga spending his money to tell you the truth. So you tell me who you want to fuck with. I'm spending my money to tell y'all the truth. These motherfuckers getting money to fucking lie to y'all. Real nigga shit. <clears throat> so currently, do you feel like with the state of things, it, it's, you'd be better off if, if you were making the same music or, or discussing the same topics as most artists? You wouldn't have these problems? Um, no, I, no, I wouldn't have the problems, but I would have a problem. Like, I'd rather the world have a problem than for me to have that problem. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to conform, like, switch nothing that I'm doing to basically fit into what people want. Because the shit that I'm doing is more of a need. It's not a want. I looked at this shit from jump as a fucking need. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, my people need a nigga to... Run them some, to fucking tell them the truth, cuz. You know what I'm saying? It ain't what we want. It's some shit that you need. It's some shit that ain't gonna taste right to you off the door. You know what I'm saying? I gotta spoon feed it to you over time. Give it to you like that. In doses. And over time, you know what I'm saying? You'll see that it's good for you. You gotta see what it do for you. It's like soul food, like they're telling you, man. It's good for you, but... You may feel like <coughs> otherwise. You know what I'm saying? So you've been an artist long enough to see the game go through changes. You did projects when there was still, you know, CDs and prior to the internet taking over. And now you're doing projects in a game that's digital. Yeah. So do you feel, how do you feel, you know, what are the <laughs> benefits, the pros and cons of the game how it was with CDs and MP3s and how it is now with just streams and downloads? Do you feel like there's a difference and what is the difference? Big fucking difference. <laughs> they wiped out the tangible products. That's what I was going back to when I was talking about that quarantine, because in the song, I even see that, like, how they basically deleting all of the physicals and replacing everything with digital. Digital, by no means, is going to be conducive to an independent artist. The only thing that I will say about the digital side of it is that I can put my music out and distribute it to these, I mean, this distributor online, and my music can be everywhere. So anybody can go find it. Anybody that hear about it, hear anything, they can go straight there and find it. That's the only thing that I'm going to see. But as far as money-wise, I got to go tangible all day. I used to be able to make a mixtape, fuck, from the house, in a room, knock that shit out, go straight to the street, sell that shit, five, ten dollars a while. So I could instantly make money right then and there, straight to my pocket, five to ten dollars a while, is what I'm saying. I get online, I have my shit distributed where everybody can go get it now. But they can listen to a whole album from me and I don't get but a penny. For a whole album worth of shit. So, like I'm saying, we can go from five to ten dollars a watt to a penny. That's the difference. If I'm gonna break it down in a nutshell and make it all the way better, I mean real, 
it's all kinds as far as digital. It's like it don't even exist. It's not tangible, my nigga. It's like me telling you I got some shit that I can sell you. Or, you know what I'm saying? Man, show me, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Show me what you got. You're telling me you got it or whatever. All right, I heard you. I won't see that. You know what I'm saying? I won't get it. Tangible. It's shit like Wi-Fi. I mean, digital. It's like Wi-Fi. You did it. You can't see it. It exists, but I can't touch it. I can't fucking see it. You know what I'm saying? It's just in motion. So that's the way that I break that down. And I'm always for tangible. Fuck that intangible shit. Straight up. But that's the world. <laughs> so as, the a, as an independent artist, the the amount you make per download and per stream doesn't differ much from a signed artist. No, not at all. The only difference is I get mine straight to me. They basically signed to a company that's basically collecting all of that shit. So they signed all the rights over like that. And I didn't know this shit really. I saw BNB Rock see the shit in the interview. And dude basically was like, as soon as he signed over, his uh I mean signed on to his deal, people took straight total control over all this shit. So it's like he not even running the page. He gotta send shit to these people and they have to approve that shit to put it on his fucking page. So this shit wild, man. <laughs> That's why I'd rather go the real independent route. Like, I'm not saying independent with somebody behind me putting up money. This isn't new. The real fucking independent route, bro. That's what people don't know about. They ain't about this struggle. That's why you see so many people bow down and just go fuck with anybody that's going to put up some money for them and basically let them fucking put them on autopilot and they basically steady fucking career in whatever direction they want the shit in. Whichever one basically going to make the most money or however the shit going to be. They about to pimp the fuck out you. You know what I'm saying? You alone for the ride, bro. So, that's how that shit go. Rather be a famous fucking hoe. <laughs> you dig? Or you rather be, you know what I'm saying? Well, I ain't gonna say great, but you still can make a living and make some money. You ain't gonna be as famous, but you a fucking man at the end of the day, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can hold your head up, bro. I'm looking at these people, blow their fucking brains out. Because they tired of the shit they're dealing with. They put themselves in this position. They ain't got no fucking way out, my nigga. I'm telling y'all before y'all even enter the building, brother. This is the reality of this shit. So you fucking figure out exactly how bad you want it, my nigga. Because that's the game you playing. <clears throat> so how do you feel about the current state of hip-hop? The, the music and, and also the climate. We went from... Rappers being robbed and, and and debating whether checking in was a good thing or a bad thing to right. rappers being killed to rappers being in court and taking plea deals. Man, so, man. How do you feel about the current state of hip hop as far as <laughs> music and as far as the climate? To be honest, that's the shit that really be fucking me up, bro. Because it's like, I look at it, and I understand, like, you know how you can see, like, you know, the rap music, this and that, bro. But it's like, to be a man, from looking at it, it's fucking entertainment, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can sit here and see rap music all we want, bro. But that's bullshit, cuz. Because it ain't even about the music no more, my nigga. It's more about the entertainment aspect than it ever been. You know what I'm saying? You got to go out here and entertain. I'm talking about, like... Grown ass men, you gotta, you gotta be on some little boy ass shit, like just some, you know what I'm saying? Just some weird ass shit, but like this is just not becoming of a grown man, is what I'm saying, dog. Like you're grown, you're mature, you know what I'm saying? Why you still acting like a little boy, dog? Not saying that some of this shit can't still, you can still have, you know, them tendencies or whatever in the nigga, but what I'm saying is, bro, like you really, man, this is what you promoting to people, like, man, I want, this me first. You dig? Like, I'm a man second. This me first. Like, I ain't never understood, man. You're a man first. Whatever else comes second, cuz. You know what I'm saying? As a man. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, these rules, I'm not familiar even with this shit, bro. Like, I'm adapting to this shit every day, bro. 
this is not my traditional way of thinking, is what I'm saying. Because this world does not allow me to think in my traditional way of thinking no more. Like, just straight up. It's so much shit to adapt to, bro, and it's just so much shit. And it's just like, I could go on and on about that, you know? So, it's like, I don't even try to stress off of this shit, bro, because I know it's like, man, everything got an expiration date on it, is what I do know. I know that there's some fuck shit, there's some fucked up times or whatever I'm saying, bro, but it's like, everything got an expiration date, bro. Like, nothing is going to last forever, bro. And that's what I live with, and I keep pushing through this shit, basically. Like, it's like fog, you know what I'm saying? You're caught up in some deep-ass fog, you can't see shit. You don't see nothing really till you get on the other side of it, bro. And we gonna keep pushing till we get to that other side, my nigga. Straight up. When shit clear, visible, and makes sense. So with being your own independent artist and and you're you independent and from what I'm hearing, you're independent and a hundred percent of that as in you provide your own money for your projects and anything I do. You write, record your own projects. You 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 doing your own artwork. You doing your own beats. I got G Oracle, a good friend of mine. Man, she do all of my artwork. Shout out G Oracle. You know what I'm saying? Real shit. That's the all of the artwork, like every cover that I done had, and anything like that. My shirts, clothes, all that type of stuff. G Oracle, man, definitely. For music, um, and for my beats and thing, production, all that type of stuff, I go through Ant. That's three six eight. Um, they send me the he send me the tracks or whatever. Like I basically engineer myself as far as going in. I record myself, record everything that I ever wrapped off is me. Like I recorded everything that I did. And I basically submitted. I submitted to my partner, Dude. I let him um, hustle hard, undefined on the tracks, cause nice. He basically been taking my shit to the next level. Not like I'm actually just not getting to hear myself how I've been wanting to hear myself all my life. We just started getting to that shit. Like, I've been recording the shit the same way, but it's like trying to grow out uh, different engineers and shit. I had to finally find a person like with the chemistry and just us together doing that shit together just made a big old difference. And I can hear the difference in it right now. So everything that's coming from me now is going to be like a combination of both of us. If you heard real rap or whatever, that's him on that and that shit sound different than everything else. So we're going to keep it pushing. So even as an independent artist, you've, you've begun to branch out beyond music. I mean, you, you said you got merchandise. Yeah. Shirts like these, try to keep it positive. Everything is all on my own website at Black Dove 7 Instagram. You can check all of that out there. Facebook, I have different designs. It's mainly like on some positivity. I keep everything positive. This one right here is the hard head edition of our own seven wall hard head shirts. So, oh, hold it, y'all want that, man, holla at me. Check it out on the website, baby. We here with it. I got a lot of dope options. Check out the page. You're going to see. So, what else <laughs> do you want to do or can you do as an independent artist to maximize your exposure? To maximize exposure. You got your music, you got your merchandise, but you said one of your biggest problems as an independent artist is getting it to people, getting people to see it here. It is. And that's the struggle that I'm basically dealing with right now. Like, that's what I deal with as far as just branching it out. I can reach as many people as I can reach. Like, I do a dash, I do different jobs, make money. While I'm dashing, I'm normally spreading the word, just keeping that going to people, trying to pump it up in the ears. I have my cards, scan codes. I hand those out to everybody. I speak to everybody, keep it cordial, and basically let them know what I'm out here doing. I don't really get into what I'm against, none of that. I just want them to know exactly what I'm doing and what I'm doing it for. Letting them know that I'm doing that for them, like the everyday person. I don't rap for, you know, like just... 
I don't rap for money. I'm on the monetary side. I'm saying I do want my money from my music, but what I'm saying is it's not my sole intention to make money off of my music. Like I was doing music when I wasn't making nothing for it. So that's never been like a compromise for me, like just to put these songs out because this shit gonna make me some money. I'd rather put out what I really want to put out and I just take whatever come with that shit to be real. You know what I'm saying? I know that it's much more in what I'm putting into this stuff than a lot of others are putting into it. Like, that's just what it is. I can only go one way and that's all the way. Or oh, not at all. Not at all. You know?